In October of last year, Jack, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, the um, cardiovascular imaging section, uh, started a series of articles on colchicine therapy for plaque and um, plaque management and uh, decrease of heart attack and stroke risk. Colchicine. Now, yeah, it's the one that you're thinking of. It's been given for gout forever. And I almost literally mean forever. Uh, the first recorded use of colchicine was in the Ebers papyrus. That was 1500 BC. So, what, 3,500 years ago? Long time. <clears throat> Uh, colchicine actually comes from a plant, um, col Colchicum autumnal. It's also known as the autumn crocus, meadow saffron, or naked ladies. Naked ladies because the flower actually comes up after the plant leaves have died away. Now, <clears throat> why would we be talking about colchicine for heart attack and stroke prevention? Where did that come from? Well, I will talk about that, and we'll talk about uh, some of the other facts about colchicine and why that's an in interesting issue for heart attack and stroke prevention. Uh, but first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer. I'm a physician. I've been in prevention all my life. Um, have been a, pretty much a poster boy for uh, what's been considered the, uh, the lifestyle for prevention, plant-based diet for 30 years. Um, trained in prevention at Johns Hopkins, started off as an ER doc, um, ran uh, marathons, uh, did routine exercise, and still got a significant um, increase. At age 50, what, 57, I had my first CIMT. This is a, a way of aging the plaques uh, in your arteries. Came out at 74 years old. Yeah, I found out that I had significant genetic risks and insulin resistance. Um, over the next couple of years, I did a lot of work on, um, uh, on insulin resistance. In the first year, I made a couple of changes in terms of medications. Uh, many people don't like to hear this, but the major change I made was I agreed to go ahead and start a statin. Um, over the next year, I saw my plaque uh, arterial age drop about 20 years. So again, that was at age uh, February 2015 uh, up here, Feb September 2016, and as you can see a steady drop in between. Those were not the only three um, CIMTs I got. During that time period, I uh, got others. So I have maybe a little bit different perspective. I'm, uh, I've been plant-based before that didn't uh, prevent my problem. Now let's go back to colchicine. Why is colchicine an issue right now? Um, <clears throat> well, in June of 2017, this fellow, Paul Ridker from uh, Brigham and Women's at Harvard, published a study where he's the principal investigator called Cantos. It was basically taking an anti-inflammatory in a worldwide study and preventing heart attack and stroke. So he's been preaching this gospel of inflammation as a cause of heart attack and stroke for a very long time. What do we mean by inflammation? Well, this just Google it. Uh, look up images, um, artery plaque inflammation, and you'll see a whole lot. This is like really bad. Um, these are different areas of the plaque itself. That's where the plaque broke through and you, and you got bleeding um, and you got clotting. Um, that's what happens. If you, you get a plaque, that's, that starts with the LDL. Um, here's a little bit simpler picture. Here's a normal artery. You get a plaque that starts with LDL. Then the immune system starts recognizing that and we start taking friendly fire. The, the immune system does what it thinks it should do. It starts attacking uh, that uh, plaque which should not be there. Unfortunately, when the immune system attacks that plaque, it causes what we call hot plaque or inflamed plaque. It liquefies it. If that plaque gets out into the artery, it will cause a clot. 
out into the uh, bloodstream. Here's a microscopic view. Uh, the blood cells here. This is the uh, early stages, and each stage is a little bit later to where at this, the end you see you've got a bunch of dead material. Uh, it's been killed by cells like these white cells that have been attracted by this, the chemicals released by this process. They come in, release um, enzymes, which are meant to uh, digest this material. And that's exactly what it does. But again, unfortunately, that liquid, once it pops through the endothelium or the intima layer, will cause a clot. And the clot will get you. Here's just another view of that process. So again, <clears throat> I'm doing a, a, this is part of a series on uh, inflammation. And we had, we needed to do a little review on that because I'm finding that even though one of the themes of this channel is to educate folks about um, arterial uh, cardiovascular inflammation, uh, that message is still slow to get out there. Now, <clears throat> in one of those articles in Jack, uh, October of last year, they mentioned a few studies that are going on with colchicine. Now, Here's one of the studies. Um, it's called Colcott, the Colchicine Cardiovascular Outcomes Trial. Colcott. Where did uh, you can find that just by going to clinical trials? And I'll leave you a uh, a link for it. Clinicaltrials.gov is part of the NIH. The National Institutes of Health have a site where they describe all of the studies that they uh, have funded and that are currently. Uh, under process. This one is being done at the Montreal Heart Institute. And <clears throat> as you go a little bit deeper into the um, study, uh, into that, that part of the site where they talk about Colcott, you, you understand some of the rationale behind the study. First they talk about, well it's uh, atherosclerosis is the most common cause of heart attack, then they start going into what I just went through. It's not so much the atherosclerosis, it's the inflammation. There are studies like Cantos that have come out recently which have demonstrated that decreasing inflammation decreases heart attack and stroke. Then they go on to say, <clears throat> Colchicine is an inexpensive yet potent anti-inflammatory drug. It's been around forever. It's well tolerated. We'll talk about whether, how well tolerated it is in just a few minutes. Um, and it's already approved for use with gout and uh, familial Mediterranean fever, some of the other uh, inflammatory diseases and arthritides. Um, the mechanism of action is through the inhibition of uh, microtubules. There's a, an enzyme called tubulin. Um, it helps move things around through the cell. There's, it creates what's called a, a cell matrix, and then it moves things like enzymes uh, throughout the cell so the cell can deliver these digestive enzymes to whatever it's trying to digest. Um, <clears throat> Colchicine may also have direct anti-inflammatory effects by inhibiting inflammatory signaling networks known as the inflammasome. Uh, and inflammatory chemokines. In other words, these chemicals that attract those white blood cells, it can slow down that process as well. So colchicine has multiple uh, impacts on these neutrophils, these monocytes that release the enzymes, uh, myeloperoxidase, um, plaque 2. We talked about that in, in several other um, videos, those are some of the enzymes that we have blood tests for, that we look for to see if you have inflammation in your bloodstream. So, <clears throat> through the disruption of the cytoskeleton, colchicine is uh, believed to suppress the secretion of those enzymes. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to colchicine just a minute. Um, if you look it up in Wikipedia or something, you'll see that for the geeks, uh, it's a moderately complex uh, compound. You got a couple of six carbon uh, aromatic rings, a seven carbon ring, um, and the term, just 
if you're not familiar with the term uh, aromatic, don't worry about it. It's not that significant. You also have some uh, nitrogens and oxygen in this molecule. So again, for the biochemistry geeks, that's what it looks like. So <clears throat> we've got major hope here for a medication that's very inexpensive, very well, un maybe unlike statins, very well tolerated. Well, not so fast. Uh, if you have a family member or if you've taken colchicine, you may uh, know a little bit more of the story. <clears throat> colchicine, um, as I said, binds uh, and inhibits microtubule polymerization. Colchicine also causes GI upset. It can cause neutropenia. In other words, you know those white cells that attack the... Uh, uh, it slows down those white cells that attack the um, the inflammasome, the uh, or the inflammatory process, the plaque. Well, it can actually cause loss of those, significant loss of white cells, and significant loss of uh, all red blood cells. Egg granulocytosis is loss of uh, all blood, well, all of the uh, neutrophils. Excuse me, not all blood cells, all neutrophils or neutropenia, which is a relative loss of those white blood cells. Um, that, in fact, can turn around and create other problems in terms of your ability to fight infection. Um, <clears throat> for people that have renal failure, uh, significant renal failure um, is a contraindication, contraindication for um, colchicine, again, because of toxicity. It can cause neuromyopathy, uh, damage to the nerves and cells. And guess what? It has interactions with statins and fibrates. So, <clears throat> um, the very other medicines that we look at to decrease uh, heart attack and stroke risk. So, <clears throat> if you actually look deeper at colchicine, um, I'm very skeptical. I, I, um, I think it may work. I'm um, not skeptical about that, but I'm skeptical that people are going to say, oh, well, now we've got a safe alternative to statins. The bottom line is, um, you know, I used to be a toxicologist. Anything can be a toxin in the right situation, the right concentration. Thank you very much for your interest.